Four, We're starting with here. Two. Okay. TV coming at you from the Rio in Las Vegas. And finally, we get to sit down with Danny Legrano. Thanks so much for joining yeah, us. Yeah, no man. worries, man. And thanks so much for joining us on our 50K pregame panel. We just had an hour. Did you have a good time? That was fun, yeah. I mean, I wish it went longer, actually. I wish I came earlier. Yeah. yeah you you dropped by at, at the last moment, and the conversation was all, was all the richer. So, ahead of the 50K in summary, how are you feeling ahead of this event? I look good. Which is important. I it think. Good for yeah, it. I feel good. I sat and sent for 20 minutes today. Yeah. I'm wearing a fun little giddy up thing here. You know, I'm really been doing good, but at least I look good. Yeah, tell us about that. You know, <laughs> I, I think you've been saying you haven't been running very well this series, and you make the distinction between running well and playing well. Yeah, I mean, I've been, I'm what I'm 37 now. I've been playing poker for 20 years. I'm not delusioned by the difference between you know running because I mean. The fact is, when I was younger, I used to think I was running bad, and it was probably a combination of really playing bad. Um, I have a good, pretty good internal monitor of myself, mm -hmm. and I can tell the difference. And uh, this year, as well as last year, actually the last few years of the World Series, I've certainly run well below par in key situations, and all in situations, as 2-1 favorite. The final table I made um, was 5 left. I got it into 1 favorite. I win that pot. I'm chip leader at a very weak table. The other side of Tommy Vitas, the rest of the players were with all due respect, kind of weak and would have been easy to run over. Um, but, you know, and since then, I've just been having some bad luck. And the, 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 the toughest part about that is trying to stay positive when it continues to happen. And that's the fight we fight. Have you been having a good time? Yes and no. You know, it's, uh, I'm at a place now where I'm kind of over it. You know, I'm kind of over all the beats. And now, like, I got, I bubbled the uh, Stud 8 Omaha 8, and I had a lot of chips and went through them. And it, I didn't have that same anger inside me that mm -hmm. I wanted to rip cards. I kind of jokingly did, right. but I didn't. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think I'm in a good place in, in that sense for the 50K. Having said that, you know, not exactly um, a lot of confidence that you normally have based on some results. You know, lately I've just not been doing well at all. So uh, I'm just gonna have to give it the best, do the, give the, do, do the best I can. Fine. I, I, I speak that language. <laughs> yeah. I speak those mumbles. Yeah. So it's okay then. Um, something that actually I think you said during the panel discussion we just had before this interview was uh, you know you uh, you know kind of decried those who spend too much time on like you know their phone and their iPads you know so concentration how much are you concentrating uh, on this World Series of Poker and on winning a bracelet because uh, you tweet a lot and I'm wondering you know are you able to really fully concentrate on the game and still tweet about children being spanked for instance the truth is <laughs> outside of that I actually was, I was exhausted the last two days but throughout the entire World Series I haven't even been looking at my phone it's off it's on silent I update at, at DN chips every hour my chip count and then on breaks I take a look but while I'm playing if people text message me I don't see it um, again, yesterday my mind was I was exhausted, so there was an interesting discussion about spanking. So yeah. we got it. Uh, we just you know I decided to entertain that to keep me off of tilt or whatever. I just was tired, to be honest with you. Because yeah, yeah. social media can be pretty addictive. Yeah, you know it can capture your attention. No, it's you know? certainly a problem. It's a, it's something I switched to a couple of years ago where I started to notice that you know I was missing key information and uh, and it's under it's, it's this is something that Phil Ivey doesn't miss. You know we talk about Phil Ivey as being the 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 me the stick you know the measure. And uh, if you watch what he does, you know he's not preoccupied with Twitter. Right. He's paying attention to all these subtle little, dips, you know, things that give him the advantage in those crucial hands. That if you are, you know, here, you're missing. Like this guy when he bluffed, he went boop like that. You didn't see it. Mm -hmm. So next time when he bluffs you, everyone else, Phil Ivey noticed. Like yeah, he's bluffing, but you didn't because you weren't paying attention. No. Um, I was curious about something you recently told the poker listings, singling out Phil Ivey for full tilt poker you think is wrong. Why? I just, I, I guess I just don't understand, uh, and I don't, I don't think it's a racial thing. I joke by saying it, blame it on the black guy. But uh, the truth is, so if we look at the way Full Tilt was organized, right, you had a board, which was Howard Letterer, Chris Ferguson, Ray First, uh, Ray Batar, and a lawyer, right, five guys who made all the decisions. Mm -hmm. The rest of the people, you know, Jennifer Harmon, John Juwanda, Eric Seidel, Alan Cunningham, Phil Ivey, all in the exact same boat, okay? Right. I haven't heard the same kind of disdain for the others, um, with Eric Seidel, for example, or John Duanda, as I have for Phil Ivey. And, I, and I, I, the only thing I can think is a reason why is because Phil actually made a statement last year. He's the only one who actually did. I haven't heard any statements from anybody. Nobody said anything. So to, to sort of chastise Phil for not saying anything um, doesn't, doesn't, ring true, doesn't ring true to me. The one thing I will say is that Phil did say that, you know, last year that he wouldn't play until the players got their money back, and he's back this year, and he hasn't made a statement um, as to why. And I think he should. Right. Personally, I think that that's something that he should clarify with people. Like, okay, last year you said you're not going to play because you don't think it's fair. Well, what's different about this year? I saw Jason DeWitt say that on the show. 
And I agree, that that's something he probably has to answer to, and he will. It's actually I just, Reynolds, I think. Sorry, yeah. And he will. I think he will answer to it, but he's going to do it in not in LeBron James-like fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Completely over my head, I don't watch basketball. Oh, well, but he the, did a show. Oh, no. They'll know. They'll understand. <laughs> They'll understand. <laughs> okay. No, I, I think I agree. And you're right. It's because, you know, there's, there was something about that statement. I don't think he literally said, um, not playing until the players get paid, but just like, I don't feel right doing it, or as a gesture of solidarity. Um, but he is running very well, and what are your thoughts uh, What are your thoughts on that? Phil Ivey, is he really this good? Is he running well? Is there a combination of the two? Is he going to make another final table by the time the World Series is over? I would bet on him to make another final table. I think, I've talked to him about it, and it's funny because everyone perceives how they run differently, and uh, if you ask Phil, he's running bad, but not throughout the events. Obviously, he's running good to get there. I mean, he clearly is the best poker player in the world, but that doesn't guarantee you five final tables. Having said that, he's run really bad late, you know, in the crucial moments in the final tables. Mm. He's usually a closer. You know, when he gets the final table, his record was impeccable uh, in terms of wins. But this year, he's struggled, and he's had a lot of bad luck. Uh, and that wears on anybody, you know. He's got bracelet bets, so, you know, I'm sure he's pretty stressed about it. As, as, as I'm sure as, as happy as he is to have five final tables, he'd much rather trade all that for one bracelet and no other cash. So. Uh, I know you have... Um You've expressed a strong opinions about Folto Poker in the past. I don't really want to talk about Folto Poker. I want to talk about the World Series and how different. You've been playing it for years. You know how different is it this year, today, 2012, from years past? Especially now, it's not the first World Series after Black Friday, but I think it might be the first where the pervasive branding of some of the uh, some of these sites, Folto Poker, even Poker Stars. You're still wearing a Poker Stars patch, but Folto Poker gone, um, UB gone. So. Are we entering a new era of poker representation branding here at the World Series of Poker? Have you noticed that and what do you think? We're in a transitional phase and it's it's uh, Middle Earth time. I don't remember what that time was when nothing really happened. Middle Ages? <laughs> yeah, Middle Ages or something. Um, this year's World Series looks a lot like what people expected after Black Friday of last year. But last year everything was fine, you know? It didn't seem to really have affected it. This year I think you're starting to notice a lack of 21-year-olds who would have normally been here. A lot of the younger generation of players to pump up the fields in the big No Limit Holden tournaments um, are gone because the money's finally starting to dry up a little bit. Uh, having said that, in terms of branding, I don't think right now a poker superstar can be born. You know, even like a 21, 22-year-old kid who does great there, I mean, outside of what you guys are doing here at Quad Jacks, a lot of the attention, uh, media-wise, has been waning a little bit because, you know, we don't have the regular shows on television as we did. The big game, Poker After Dark, High Stakes Poker. So a lot of the fanfare is subsiding for now. Um, will that change? I think so when we get legislation. What will it change to? That's a question everybody, you know, wants to know the answer to, and I don't have it. But I do think that right now it's one of those things where we just kind of have to stay in a holding pattern until legislation comes, and then potentially we can re like reinvigorate the game and re have, have another boom. Mm -hmm. Maybe not to the same scale. I don't think we ever will. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I think sort of the efforts of the, the Epic Poker League and what they were trying to create is, is just grandiose and impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, poker's only exciting to people who really love poker after a while. Um, you mentioned Quad Jacks. I know you've been watching some Quad Jacks lately. Thank you, and thank you for recommending it in some instances to others. Um, and I know you've watched the interviews with uh, William Reynolds and Jason DeWitt, both of which concerned at Parts and Duke. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel comfortable now commenting yourself on um, what you have thought of Annie Duke's arrival here yeah. at the World Series of Poker? Some people are saying she shouldn't be allowed to play. What okay, are you I'm obviously a native Duke fan. I do not like this woman in any way, shape, or form. I don't trust her. I think she's awful. Having said that, I don't see any reason why the World Series of Poker should issue, uh, you know, like, you know, her uh, to, to let her know she can't play the World Series. I think she should be allowed to play in the World Series. Mm -hmm. Even Howard Letterer should be allowed to play in the World Series. Sure. Sure. I believe Russ Hamilton is a different case because he actually cheated, mm -hmm. and that you know that's been relatively proven. I think if you're actually cheating the game, and if there's evidence to show that, then you shouldn't be allowed to play. Have, but if you've just screwed a bunch of people out of money, then we, these tournaments would have like 40 people in them. You know, because a lot of people have had things they've done in their past. Um, I think it's important what these kids are doing and realizing is that. The danger is when, when these people go from place to place. She went from UB, she went from Epic, you know. If you don't call these people out, they continue to do that in their industry, which is rare. You know, Bernie Madoff 
He's never going to be allowed to give financial advice or start saying anything like this again. But in our industry, we've had people do really bad things and continue to resurface in other areas. And uh, I think it's important to call them out and not allow that. You know, you, once you've screwed up immensely, maybe you, sh you should find something else to do. Like maybe try to learn how to play poker for a living. <laughs> well, you mentioned, you, you talk about calling people out. And I've, I've developed this observation, you know. Within one year leading up to the World Series of Poker, I mean, I think you know this just as well as I do. There is uh, there is a lot of feuding in the poker world. A lot of people are talking shit to each other and stuff like that. Like, there, there, there's plenty of hate. There's plenty. Emotions really going wild. You would think that at the World Series of Poker, when all the poker players congregate, congregate, all the people who have been at war throughout the entire year congregate, what, when Jason DeWitt expresses himself so frankly to any do, you would almost expect that to be more commonplace. Yet when it happens once, it's news, like we're talking about it now. Right. What do you think? That's, that's human nature, I think. For example, like if you look at the internet and you read forums, people talk all kinds of smack, right? And then when you see them, I mean, there was guys I knew of who talked smack about me on the internet, you know, real bad stuff. And then I'd meet them like, oh, hi, Daniel. I'm like, you wimp. Say it to my face, you little punk Very espionage. prevalent. So, I mean, the truth is people have, a, people have a much easier time of stroking keys, saying what they like behind a computer. But when it's, when it's actually about confrontation, they're afraid of it. I'm not afraid of confrontation, shocker. Um, <laughs> and I appreciate people who are willing to just tell it like it is and say what they really feel, whether you agree with them or not. Like I've said things, even recently obviously, on my take on spanking, that not everyone's going to agree with. But that's okay, at least it's what I'm really mean, you know? Politicians don't tell you what they really mean, they tell you what you, they think you want them to say. And I don't, I don't, I, 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 I appreciate genuineness. Very well said. Final question, very quickly. I see you're drinking from a one drop bottle. I am. Yeah. Oh, right. one drop. Oh, one <laughs> drop. You know, actually, I did, I did a little bit of research on the charity and there's like a lot of you know, worthy causes out there. And uh, to me, the most basic human need is water. Without it, you can't cultivate crops. You just can't survive as a village. So what they do is like really grassroots good stuff. Like they, they dig and they create water wells for villages so that people can actually survive. So I think um, it's a positive cause that does a lot of good. And poker should always be connected to things like that in terms of charity because it gives us a cleaner face the world when at a time now when we really need a lot more of those very well said daniel i've really appreciated this interview i'm gonna let you go play the 50k i oh, hope yeah, you're feeling good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> glad you reminded me yeah right am i late no yeah. we're good we're good yeah all right well then parting words of wisdom for our quad jacks viewers and listeners uh parting words of wisdom be true to yourself right tell it like it is don't be afraid of controversy don't be afraid to stand alone if you feel you are right <laughs> Did I really just Very do that? Oh, ah. wait a moment. Before you go, can you do your impression of me? Well, um, on that note, I would like to say to all the viewers here at Quad Jacks that um, I appreciate uh, your candor as well as uh, the others, Bill Reynolds, Jason DeWitt, and uh, hope that uh, you at home uh, enjoyed this um, segment. And uh, next week, we will see you again with more. Um, that's a good impression. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. You know, no. It's a good impression. I mean, I enjoyed it, you know, and, you know, now I've got to give it you, and, I mean, it's poker, you know, that's just what you have to do. <laughs> good job. Thanks so much, Dad. All right. Really cool. Good luck in the 50K. Right. Quad Jacks TV. Nice. <laughs> that's good. <laughs>